Hello everyone, my name is Jason Levine, and welcome to part three of DSLR video editing for the Pro Photographer. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about using markers and creating animations or motion on your still images. This is also known as the Ken Burns effect. So we'll save the animation for the end. Let's talk about markers first, because as you all know, when you add music to something, that's really what creates the life, right? That's really what brings kind of all this moving stuff to life, is having a really nice soundtrack. And also what helps it look a bit more polished is if you have the video events in sync with changes in the music. Now, you don't have to be a, bu a musician to know how to do this. You can basically just use your ear and your eyes, and you can use markers to indicate in your timeline where you want those changes to occur. So what you'll see is that I've actually got an audio file in here. This is a piece that I composed and by the way, of course, you know, your interface here, you can, you can navigate around this. Here's our audio too. And by the way, we all have these little um, arrows that you can collapse or expand. So if I wanted to shrink this up, you'll also notice that you've got these little portion bars here so you can make it larger. The same goes for video. If we wanted to make our uh, video a bit bigger, those video thumbnails a bit larger, you can do that. I'm using my plus and minus here to zoom in, etc. So lots of flexibility there. Okay, so I've got my music and let's take a quick listen to this. I'm gonna turn up the speakers so we can hear. Take a listen. Okay, so you can kind of hear the beat uh, specifically with those cellos where you might want those transitions to happen. Now, as it turns out, just my rough edit guess here seems to work pretty well, but we can finesse that a bit more. Something else to keep in mind while you're doing this, remember that your DSLR cameras capture audio too. So you'll see that on audio track one, I've got all of the live audio from those cameras, which is a lot of wind blowing and probably not great. Keep in mind, if you wanna just disable that, you can come over to any particular audio track and you can just toggle on or off the sound. So that's not dis that's not destroying the track or anything, it's just disabling the audio at that particular moment. So again, if we just, you know, just to give you an idea here, let's turn it back on. Might be hard to hear there, but it's getting all this sort of rumble. So if we turn it off, you're not going to hear any of that. And again, if I turn this off, now, no music, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and now what I wanna actually do is let's add markers. So the best way to do it is, right here we have this set unnumbered marker. You again see there's a keyboard shortcut for that. I'm actually just going to click on it because what we can actually do, we can play back and as we're playing, when we feel a change necessary, we can click and it will automatically drop one of those markers in there. Let's do it. Okay, so you get the idea. So you can see where I dropped all of those markers. Now, effectively, what we can do is we can take the edge of our video or our images. And again, I'm going to do a ripple here. So I'm holding down my command key or the control key on the PC and I can move these. And you'll notice that as I cross the marker, it snaps to the marker. So I can adjust the durations of these clips very, very nicely like so. And you'll notice, by the way, that the transitions and everything else stays with those images. So now we have some nice changes and we can actually time these so it just looks and feels a bit more smooth and a bit more musical. Now if we take a look here, let's add a nice little transition to that. I'm going to add a dip to black across these here. Let's wind back and play again. Here we go. Now remember, we're probably going to have motion on this one. Here we go. Another one. transition. Okay, you get the idea. One of the other really cool things that you can do if you simply want to drag and drop a bunch of clips in quickly and effectively create a storyboard and then place them in a timeline automatically is a feature called automate to sequence. The way that you do this is you can come out to the flyout menu up here and you can choose to view 
the uh, details of the media in your project panel by icon instead of by list. This puts it into this storyboard-like view where essentially we can reorder and organize our media exactly as we want it to appear in the timeline and then automatically place it in the timeline based on the position of those markers. So you can see we have uh, uh, image, video, image, video, image. I can come over here and I can now select all of this media. I can come over to my test sequence where I've already laid down a couple of markers. And again, you could have done this against a musical soundtrack. And now either from the flyout menu, I can choose automate to sequence here, or I can come down to my project panel and choose automate to sequence here. And when I do that, take a look, what will happen is it's going to bring up this dialogue. You can choose the order and we'll choose selection order here place it at the unnumbered markers. You've got some different um, edit methods here, overlay if necessary, click OK, and boom, they're all laid down in the sequence automatically. And you can see the images and the video match. We've got our palm at piece and this MVI at 0078. Here they are exactly as we had them inside the project panel. Okay, but what of course is missing here is the actual motion on these clips. These images are starting to look pretty dull, not moving. So what we might wanna do is maybe start out with something like a nice zoom out, right? This is again that classic Ken Burns style, slow zooms to create this, it drags you, it pulls you in, right? Having this movement on these images. And these really nice images that I took in the desert, I think will it'll, it'll serve them well to have some really nice dramatic zooms and or pans. So let's start by doing just that, creating a nice, a nice kind of zoom. Now, because we've already got some transitions on here, I'm actually going to place my cursor in the middle of the image just so that I can see everything so that it's not in the middle of a fade. And I'm going to come over here again and click on effects controls. So with the clip selected, I'm going to twirl down motion. And effectively, all we're going to do is we're going to scale this and we're going to use keyframing to do that. If you've never done this before, what is a keyframe? Well, kind of as the word describes, it's a key frame. It's a key moment in time where you are indicating to the editing application that there is going to be some kind of a change, whether it's a change in scale, a change in position, a change in rotation, anything. The key frame is just indicating at that moment in time, there's going to be some kind of change moving forward, right? So that's what we're going to do. And basically we can create this nice little zoom in uh, uh, or zoom out rather with two keyframes. So I'm gonna come over here and scale. Now first we have to decide how, how much we're going to actually scale. So I often set the ending keyframe, like sort of the finished position first. So if we just take a look at this image, first of all, we gotta see how much room we've got to work with. So I'm thinking a, a, a zoom in will actually look pretty good. So I wanna first set the final size of this image. Now that might be a little too large, we don't need to move a lot. The other thing to remember is you don't need to move too much to still create a pretty dramatic effect. So 109% scale is where I want this to finish. Now to set that keyframe properly, I'm going to come to the end of my clip here and you can see it's in the middle of this transition. By the way, you can also use those shortcut keys. So again, I'm using the function down arrow to go to the end there. And I'm going to click on this toggle animation button right here next to scale, okay? Boom, and it's going to add a keyframe for me right there. Now remember, that's the ending position, but we want it to zoom in gradually. So now we're going to go to the beginning of that clip. Again, I held down my function key and the up arrow. And now I'm going to scale this back down. Now we can drag it manually here. So here's something to consider. Remember that you only have to click on this toggle animation button one time, the first time, the first keyframe you set, because each time you move the playhead, you move the cursor and adjust a parameter, it automatically draws the next keyframe for you. So that's a very important thing to learn. If you click toggle animation a second time for the second keyframe, you will effectively erase the first keyframe you made. That's a little bit backward, a little bit weird. The good news is, is that it works the same in Premiere and After Effects and in Photoshop. So, um, okay, so now if we just play this, got this nice fade up and this nice slow zoom. That almost seems <laughs> a little too long, right? That's okay, remember, we can always adjust durations. The key is we've got this nice motion happening here. Now, if we want this to seem a little less linear, because you'll notice that it does in fact seem kinda just like it's moving along at a constant speed, it is, but we can actually add little ramps or eases, ease in, ease out. If you've ever used After Effects, you know this real well. It's also known in some circles as temporal interpolation. 
Here's what you have to do if you just want something to ramp out of the gate and then slow down as it comes into its final position. You can right click on a keyframe and we can choose ease out. Right click on the end keyframe and for this one we want to ease in so that it actually kind of slows down as it approaches that keyframe. So do that and now when we take a look at this, let's wind it back. I don't know if you can quite see, but there is, there's a little bit of a transition as it moves in and then as it slows into its final position. Let's say that we wanted to copy these same attributes to another image, okay? But let's say I wanted to actually repeat that same motion on the next image. I can right click on the clip and choose copy, which is going to copy all of the animation that I have, come over to my next clip, which by the way, you can see doesn't have any properties on it yet. Right click or control click, paste attributes, boom. Now, when we play these back, we've now just copied the same attributes across both of these images. And you can also kind of see why a nice longer transition might work better here. So this is where if we were to come in here, we could adjust the cross dissolve duration so that it just looks a bit more smooth. Something like this, take a look now. Yeah, that just looks infinitely better, right? And very quickly start to create some movement. Now the really cool thing though, and the really interesting thing that they do with this Ken Burns effect is to show actual panning, so panning and zooming. And this next image is a perfect, uh, is a perfect one to use for that because what we have here is a family uh, on a motorcycle. And if we just zoom out, if we scale down here, you can see that what we might wanna do is actually start zoomed in, okay? And then we kind of want to pan across all of these different characters. So first what we can do, make sure you select the clip. If you actually click on motion up here, you'll see it'll become highlighted. We can now take this piece of video and we can sort of move it around inside the frame. You can see the edges of it right there. And we could start here, for instance, and let's scale up a bit, something like that. Again, move it around. Okay, so let's just set a scale keyframe. Again, we can move those around after the fact. Let's go to the end here. Go back one frame. By the way, I can use my arrow keys to advance frames. And I'm gonna scale it back out. So the final scale will be something like that, okay? So now we've got our scale keyframes. But of course, we wanna move as this is scaling. So let's move this one over. We can set a position keyframe. We're already in the first position that we want. Click on the toggle animation, it sets the keyframe for us. Come over here and we know that we want to be focused over here, maybe right in the middle, something like that, okay? So now you can see we're actually panning across and simultaneously zooming out, all right? Now what's cool about this, I'm gonna hit that tilde key to go full screen you'll notice that we have this little sort of diagram here showing us how this movement's working. By the way, I can grab this little, uh, this is also known as your jog wheel. So I can see what's happening here. And you'll notice that uh, along the motion path that you see here, we actually have little handles you can grab and then you can actually bezier this motion just to create you know, a smoother transition from point A to point B. That's really what it's all about. You can see I can adjust these handles just like that to create a bit of bezier motion. It helps to, again, be full screen and then shrink it down. So let's go back here. Now when we wind back and hit play, it transitions. Right, very cool. And now here's where we might add one of those cross dissolves across the two clips. Zoom in again. Nice long cross dissolve like this. Transition, here we go from video, transitioning to our moving still, transitioning back to another still. Really cool, right? Really simple. So that's the basic idea, that's the basic concept of using motion. Now we're gonna use this again, you'll see me do this again in the next episode, where we're actually gonna be talking about using some of your familiar friends, Photoshop files and such, and even talking about animation and the animation timeline. So stay tuned for the next one, I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you in part four, take care.